Brimstone is simply an outdated term for sulfur. Sulfur has long captured people's imaginations due to its odd properties. At room temperature, sulfur is a yellow solid. When it burns, it has a bright neon blue flame, and as it melts, it turns blood red. The word brimstone comes from the Old English word brinston, brin meaning burn and sten meaning stone. In Middle English, brinston became brimstone. The word sulfur comes from the Latin word sulfur, which likely comes from a root word meaning to burn, which became popular in the 14th century. Sulfur itself has no odour at all, but it has a reputation for smelling bad because it makes many terrible smelling compounds. For example, a skunk's defensive spray has sulfurous compounds that create a revolting rotten egg smell. Brimstone is most often associated with sulfur dioxide, which has a sharp, choking effect on the unfortunate breather. Sulfur is an essential nutrient for plants and is quite effective as a fertilizer and insecticide. Sulfur was used by the Persians almost 2000 years ago in one of the earliest known forms of chemical warfare. While fighting the Romans, the Persian army trapped them in a tunnel and lit a mixture of sulfur and bitumen together, effectively creating a chamber of gas, which turned to sulfuric acid in the Roman soldiers' lungs. In the Middle Ages, sulfur became an essential component of gunpowder. However, sulfur wasn't mass-produced until the growth of the chemical industries in the 18th and 19th centuries, when it was used to create sulfuric acid. Sulfur mustard, commonly known as mustard gas, was used in chemical warfare in the 20th century. It was favoured because of its ability to incapacitate rather than kill, resulting in large numbers of casualties requiring prolonged intensive care. During the 13th century, London's air was polluted from burning local mineral coal, which contained a relatively high sulphur content compared to other coals. This caused the English to have a particular hatred and fear of brimstone due to the suffocating sulphur dioxide being released into their air. Nowhere else in Europe was experiencing the same level of pollution, either because they were not burning as much coal, or their local coal didn't have the same levels of sulphur. London's air pollution only grew worse over the centuries. Londoners were far more likely to die from respiratory-related illnesses than those living in the countryside. It was such a big part of their lives that when medieval and early modern English writers imagined hell, they often invoked images of sulphur smoke. For example, in Hamlet, Shakespeare coined the term sulphurous to describe the flames of hell. By the early 17th century, England was experiencing an unprecedented wave of air pollution. It was at this time, when the Bible was being translated from Hebrew into English, that the first references of fire and brimstone suddenly appeared. Genesis 19.24 refers to brimstone and fire raining down on Sodom and Gomorrah, however neither is mentioned in the original Hebrew text. In Hebrew they call it gophreth, which means Jehovah's breath, or God's breath. Similarly, the brimstone in New Testament Greek is theon, which actually means divine incense. Nowhere else in Europe was as focused on the connection between brimstone and hell as the English. In Italy, for example, they had fairly sulfurous coal, but it wasn't being burned in such large quantities. Then, when you look at Italian literature like Dante's Inferno, which has very detailed descriptions of hell, there is no reference to sulfur or brimstone at all. Burning sulfurous coal remained problematic in London until well into the 20th century. The Great Smog of 1952 was a period where a thick layer of smog formed over the city, causing anywhere between 4,000 and 12,000 deaths. 